these activities uh, are either endorsed or uh, supported by uh, the, this organization. Uh, I think these are the kind of things that we need to do in order to get some uh, attention from the public uh, on this particular issue. Mr. General Secretary, do you... Uh,
Oh, I'm uh, asking the Sikh nation to have a mass movement, not to denounce all this uh, militancy. And uh, with mass movement, no power on this earth can uh, stop the Sikh nation. If Soviet Union is not in the 16 countries, India, which is not a nation anyway, it has 18 official languages, it never existed. As a unit, it's the British who made this present uh, India. Uh, it's a disintegrated for Nagas are fighting for their freedom, Kashmiris are fighting for their freedom, Sikhs are fighting for their freedom, Assamis are fighting for their freedom. And you have seen what has happened uh, uh, on December 6th uh, 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 last year that they demolished the Babri Mosque in Ajudaya. That's the single ego. <laughs> that that facade of Indian democracy, sec secularism, that crumbled and true face of theocratic fundamentally in India is before the world. <laughs> Oh, definitely, we are a Sikh nation. We rule Punjab. Punjab belongs to us. We, when British left, we were three nations to uh, 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 see power Muslims, Hindus, and Sikhs. Muslims got Pakistan, Hindus got India. We took our share with India on Salman Hindu leaders, Nehru and Zali, that India will not enact any laws which will not be accepted with the Sikhs. And Sikhs will have a law of freedom in the northwestern part of India. But as you know, that. I have to get another time. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, if, if the outside world doesn't know that on October 7, 1987, Sikh nation declared independence and they appointed me the president, they should know better. Obviously, the outside world is only listening to the disinformation of the Indian government that Sikh nation, Sikhs are bloodthirsty people and they are after killing people. And it is the opposite. It's the Indian government who wants to destroy the Sikh nation. Genocide of Sikh nation is going on and the whole world is keeping its eyes closed. Look at your British government. They are sitting in the United Nations. Everybody knows. In Amnesty International is a neutral body. India has not allowed Amnesty International within its board to investigate human rights violation. If the Sikhs are doing it, why don't they let the Amnesty International go in and, and see who is doing what? I believe you Yes, yes. What is the great piece? Oh, definitely. We are all at it. And what difference will that make for you? Oh, it makes. It is going to be a springboard for us. It is a major milestone in the struggle of independence of uh, India. And we are going to use this uh, springboard to uh, land into the uh, into freedom into free Khalistan because it gives us a lot of international exposure as we are doing right now. If I will not happen here, you won't come to me. And moreover, we can use the facilities of UNPO as a member to disseminate the oppression of the Sikh nation and our real struggle is for independence, not for uh, of terrorism. Uh, Do you think it will increase the violence or less? It will be less. Actually, the violence is by the Indian government. They are probably sitting in Punjab. They are what they say. They have nothing. They have killed our They have killed our So you say that when we are in the I condemn that killing of Hindus. I can I can give it to you. I will give to you. We are not part We are not. My impression of that is, I'm giving you my impression that it is not going to change the resolution of this organization. So that's why she can state it. And they killed 16 Hindus. What really the six games in the Hindus? And next day, in the government, 96 in a fake encounter. You know it, what's going on. And uh, <laughs> this is mystery. Let me give you those things. Do you, do you remember? The ambassador of uh, Romania was uh, uh, Indian ambassador in Romania. No, not Indian ambassador. Romanian ambassador in Delhi was a 
Can you imagine a foreign diplomat being a doctor, a doctor in Delhi and six can take it to uh, Punjab where there is a, a police barricade at every hundred, every 500 yards or half a mile, not even half a mile, maybe one third of a mile. If they are so strong, why don't they abduct the Prime Minister of India or people like HKL Pagat who has killed thousands of six and I think it was luck that uh, there was enough population. I gave a statement, I think that uh, they were tested that if they can get away with this and many an ambassador, they can abduct some uh, American diplomat or British diplomat. This is in England or in the United States. We do not. What will we gain by abducting the diplomat? We are coming to the foreign countries to please help us. U.S. Congress is helping us. They got 24 million dollars in House of Representatives last year, 21st by 219 votes versus 200. America is helping us. But if we abduct the American diplomat, they will turn against us. It's the work of the Indian government. I myself, information made for me, target of assassination by the Indian government. If you know any uh, uh, Indian ambassador in the U.S. that he has who was a governor in Punjab from 1869, he is responsible for killing of thousands of Sikhs. He brought in these fake encounters. He is the one who killed 20,000 Bengalis in villages in Bengal. He is the one who drafted that emergency in his, uh, 75 and uh, with Indira Gandhi went to the president and uh, enforced emergency. That doesn't. That is a moral uh, bankruptcy of India to send a person like right him to uh, uh, Washington as its investor. I'm exposing it. And that person is so evil and retired and murderer. He then kills six leaders and then blame on the six that six killed me. Why a six should kill me? But he will do the same thing. He will, some Hindu will grow beard or he will give some money to some stupid six to get me assassinated. And then also say Sikh leader is killed by a Sikh. So that's what they do. Okay, let me give you those statements. I hope uh, if you want another tape, I will be delighted to give you another. We got a lot Asked by the General Assembly in the past to be very careful. Uh, scrutinizing all these members' uh, applications. The new members now are Kareni, Nagaland, Skenia, and Khalistan. And uh, at the beginning, at the opening session, my brother, uh, Bonnie Gary, the uh, chairman of the steering committee, already informed you. I will go through that, those names once again, those who are still under consideration. Lado, Kamok, Meshket Turk Batan, Sindhi, Buryat, Kachinlan, and Roma. And uh, by next, I think, I assume, Mr. General Secretary, you will work out something by the members of the MPO. And I hope that they will all their contribution will be a very relative one to our organization. Yes. And then, once again, I urge you all, please, to pay your pay your membership dues. And those who can pay now is very good. And those who cannot, maybe they should try to, you know, contribute some, you know, small symbolic sums also. And then. Uh, I have here copies of some resolutions already. I have four of them. Uh, one is from Kosovo, and one is from uh, and this is East Timor, and one from Abkhazia, and one from Khalistan. Uh, I uh, kindly urge the Khalistan members of, or new members of Khalistan to sign their names on the resolution so we know where it's coming from and uh, those who have submitted them i don't have a copy here should do so immediately 
and uh, give it to our general secretary and to the to the uh, secretaries here. Uh, Tsering, Mrs. Sering Jaffa is standing right there, and they should get in touch with uh, Mrs. Ms. Sering Jaffa. In that respect, anything else, General Secretary? Are you standing? Uh, would the new members uh, like to say a few words? We are running out of time. If they do want to do so, please.